This video is going to dive into the API style guides. Why would you want a style guide? A style guide can enforce uh, API design rules across all of the APIs in your API registry. So you can do this at two levels. You can put this inside of a Redocly configuration file uh, inside of any API in the registry or, um, or not or, and you can also enforce it globally. Uh, the global enforcement happens in the settings here in the API style guide. It could be required. If it's required, it won't allow a build to pass if it doesn't pass, uh, if, if, it, if the lint doesn't pass. If it's not required, the build will still pass and the errors will appear in the logs. So let's take a look. This was um, set um, not required. And we'll take a look at one of our recent APIs in the registry and go into the, the logs here. So we can see here that it didn't pass the, the uh, global corporate organization style guide. And we can see what didn't pass, uh, what we would need to change if we wanted to uh, improve it or fix the issue. And uh, now let's go back uh, to the settings here. Let's, um, le well, let's, let me show you, how do you find, so let's open this up here, API style guide. How do you find what these possible configuration options are? You can see I've got, this is YAML here, and there's some things commented out here. We could uncomment it uh, by highlighting it and hitting command uh, forward slash. It's, it's a way to comment or uncomment things. The, um, so there's various uh, uh, rules in here, and uh, but where do these come from and how do we write them? Well, if we scroll up here, uh, th this link will take you to learn more about style guide, uh, the API style guide specifically, but if you wanna find uh, what those possible values for rules are, uh, visit our docs, scroll down to Redocly CLI, resources, built-in rules. Now, on the right here on the page table of contents, there's a list of rules. There's quite a few of them. And you can, and there's one rule uh, that is very powerful in particular, which is assertions. It has its own uh, page of content and it's extremely flexible. So there's all kinds of uh, assertions that you can create. If we uh, tab it back, we can see that there are various assertions here, all part of that same rule where you can define patterns, minimum lengths, maximum lengths, and use um, uh, uh, quite a few more options that you, you can see described on this page. For example, enforcing casing, uh, mutually exclusive, mutually required, defined, undefined, disallowed, and uh, this is, you target it based on a subject. So uh, this is uh, a subject, and this would be the open API uh, node uh, type. For example, let's take a look over here. We're targeting a tag over here and a, an operation over here. You can also optionally um, target a specific property. If you don't target a property, then it's going to target that um, subject's keys. And um, you can also optionally define a, a context. So th in this example, uh, we are saying that um, in the responses map, only for operations that are put requests, it, we require uh, 200 and 201 uh, responses to be defined. So this is uh, an example rule set. Now let's go ahead and add an additional rule. So uh, go back here. Um, there's a new rule that we shipped recently, scalar property missing example. Why would you want uh, this rule? And you can put this anywhere uh, in here. I'll put it here. You can uh, uh, mark it as an error or if you put warn, 
it's, it would be like a warning. So we'll, we'll set it at warn for now. And, uh, and let's go ahead and save this and mark this as required. Um, and let's go back to our API registry, go into that same API and let's rebuild it. So this is good. Oh, this isn't going to rebuild all of the previews. It's building the uh, production and it failed. So let's dive in and see the reason it failed. So two um, rules didn't pass. One was that assertion that we created and the other, which, was, which says that for a put request, um, you need to have 200 and 201 um, responses defined, but this one only has a 200 defined. And uh, this one, which was uh, failing before, but the build passed before because we had the, um, uh, the rule um, not required, the API style guide wasn't required to pass the build. So now um, scrolling down a little bit, we can see the new property, uh, the new rule that we just enabled, which is letting us know that there's no example defined on this specific property here um, or on this property here. So, but this is enabled as a warning. So even if these weren't uh, defined, warnings won't uh, stop the build if it's marked as required. So we'll go back in here and let's uh, readjust this back to the API style guide. And uh, let's, let's save that change back to the registry and we will rebuild one more time and we'll see this failed in the logs and now it should um, it should succeed we see it succeeded and but we can see when we drill in that and we can see it's still building a preview of the docs well finish that now but that the API style guide there were problems and we can see that there were two errors and 36 warnings both of those errors are still here but the build was allowed to uh, pass for the for the organization style guide. So th this is a really interesting feature. It's relatively new and quite powerful uh, for uh, those of you who would like to enforce some consistency in your API. Uh, consistency is one of the most important factors in making an API easy to use for developers. And this is really in line with our mission at Read Dockly. Our mission is to help consumers use your APIs with less handholding and support. So we encourage you to take advantage of this to help us help you help your consumers use your APIs with less handholding and support. Thank you.